<laughs> you guys look great. And as I told you already, we love to talk about, about style, fashion, culture. Your character got some pretty cool threads this time. You actually added some feathers. Tell me about getting into the wardrobe department. I mean, they're really, it's, they're, they are incredible. Um, and the, the leather, I mean, unfortunately, it was very hot in London this summer, so it wasn't really leather <laughs> weather, but it was, the thing with the costume is, it, it, I mean, it's always an essential part for us to get into character. Yeah. But also, sometimes it's a bit of a shame on this job because there's so many details that mm. a lot of them will never even be noticed. And like the, my buttons had, had little... Um, Claw, uh, talons, whatever, bird hands crossing over. There was tiny, the tiniest details. I mean, but it's 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 yeah. all handmade. You know, I could, I like the cloak. I, I think the, I can yeah. make the cloak work this winter. I love the cloak and like the whole like feathers on the side when you're yeah. dressed up. I mean, and the prince, he had some pretty cool threads too. Were there any little distinct pieces on your costumes at all? Yeah, my, mine like immediately changed the way I stood as well. They was they were like really, they like fixed me in. They were. So you're wearing a corset. Well, no, not 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 well, almost. They, they were like these beautifully made like sort of leather coats that were, right. um, a couple of different variations. But I had it lucky. Like on one of the hot days, everyone was wearing like layers and layers of. of you had an coats. open shirt. And didn't I, you? I, I, yeah, I, I had an open shirt. I remember it was, that. I felt, I felt like pretty jammy. Yeah. <laughs> this doesn't have any real consequence, and it's certainly no reason to overreact. It's just that. Prince Philip has um, disappeared. <laughs> now, now Philip has yellow fever. No, wait, leprosy. No, Mrs. Prince Philip has asked Aurora if she'll become his. Don't ruin my morning. Well, I mean, I think that you guys looked pretty great in all of your costumes, and it really gets you into the character and gets us into it. And we see sort of the distinct features between the humans and these magical creatures. And I love how it kind of highlights how different they are. And it also makes me think of today, how we live alongside people who look a little different. What do you think this movie also says about just living with others who are different from you? Well, I think that's rather you know, the message so one of the main messages of this one, unlike the first movie, which was about that real love can come in all shapes and sizes. It doesn't have to be from a prince. It can be from a mother figure or, or, or whatever. And I think in this one, we're living in very divisive time in human history again. Um, and there's a lot of divisive politics. I know there is here in the States and in Britain at the moment, we're very polarized people. And, and in these moments, often, you know, it's easy to find scapegoats for our problems, um, and that's what's happening uh, in in the world. And I think what we're part one of the messages here is that we should celebrate our differences; that we're not as yeah. as different from one another as as people would like would like us to believe. Mm. It simplifies things, you know, that, that sort of idea. And and that's interesting, mixed with the fairy tale where we talk about good and evil, which amazingly is still language that we use today. Or, because there is, it's much more complicated than that. You know, it was an easy way to explain things to children. You know, that's good and that's evil. But we, but we're more. We should be more. Um, what's the right word? We're more sophisticated than that. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank, thank you guys so much for your time today. Thank you.